In the last episode, we covered the basic layout of a campaign cartography 3. Here we're going to set up the map itself. And then the next in the series will be getting us into putting lands and mountains onto the map. If you're new to Campaign Cartography 3, I advise that you watch the first videos in the series first. But if you don't mind jumping right in to the middle of it, then by all means. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to make any notes. At the end of the video, you will find my personal guide. It's a complete step-by-step 11-page -step document as a complete free download. And it covers everything that I'm teaching in this whole video series. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're now inside Campaign Cartographer 3. And to set up our map, the first thing we want to do is to go to File and choose New. Now, the software is going to prompt you to say if you want to if you want to save your changes. Now I, I have a file called test here, which I'm going to use. And of course, my my options here are in Danish. So you'll, your, your version will say yes and no, which is basically what it says here. So I'll press yes, please. Then you are prompted by the drawing wizard. And here we're going to select overland maps. And what we want to do is design, decide settings myself. So with that one ticked and this one ticked, we press next. You'll then be asked what kind of map style you want. If, your map, if you want a map measured in miles, you're going to go with CC3 standard overland. If you want a map measured in metrics, then you're going to go with CC3 standard overland metric. Now, there is a bunch of choices here. The only one you have to worry about is the two at the bottom here. So for now, I want to measure my unit in miles. So I'll choose this one and press next. The next page that come up here is for selecting the appropriate dimensions of the map. Uh, as I covered in my book on fantasy map ma making, staying in the range of a thousand miles is a solid rule of thumb. In the book, I explain why in much more detail, but for now, let's just accept this as a fact. If you have a compelling reason for another world size, then you should, of course, go with that. As an example, I can explain that Lord of the Rings has a map corresponding to the measure measurements I mentioned here. The distance from Bag End to Mount Doom is approximately a thousand miles. Once you've selected the width and height of your map, then you have the option to include a map title. So for this example, I'll just stay with a thousand miles in width and 800 miles in height. So for a map title, let's put YouTube tutorial. And we can also put in a copyright notice if we want. So I'll just put my name here. OK. So in both cases, I can choose where on the map I want to place them. So let's say top left title. I would like top left. I would like to place the map title. So I click the map title. I click OK. And let's say I would like my copyright notice on the bottom right corner of the map. So I press that one and say copyright notice. OK. So it will now make sure that once we are starting drawing that the map title is up here in the corner and the copyright notice is down in this corner. Now we also have the option if I, for example, press top right, I can, for example, put a scale onto the map. So let's say in the top right, I would like a scale. 
in the bottom left, I would like a compass rose. So I have three options here I can choose from. Uh, I'll just pick one at random here. You can select whichever you prefer. So now with all our selection done, we press next. Now you'll want to tick the box map background here and then select a background that fits the type of map that you're creating. Unfortunately, Campaign Kotaku for 3 does not, is not very good in showing you the selection that you've chosen here in the preview window. So, well, I've never found a better way than, than trial and error, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for that. But what I can tell you is that I personally always choose the setting water dark bitmap, this one. This will give you a base of ocean uh, onto, onto which you can place all your land masses. So basically that's why, as I explained in the first uh, video, why my screen had this uh, kind of uh, watery bluish color instead of the campaign Kotaku for logo, etc. If you want, you can also tick this box called Grid Overlay. What this will do is laying a grid across your entire map, you know, like the ones used on board games. I never do this, but uh, if it makes sense for you, go ahead. If you do, you can also select Grid Settings. And once you're done with all of this, you can apply. I'm not going to do it, so I'll say Cancel. Once everything is set up, press next. Now this next window in the wizard is asking you about multiple levels. So this is relevant when you're drawing houses or dungeons or something where you have multiple levels inside. For our purposes, we're not interested. So we'll just go ahead and click finish. You'll then be prompted about saving the file it'll all automatically suggest to save itself inside the C3, CC3 folder on your computer. But you can choose another location if you wish. So in our cases, I will save the whole thing on the laptop or desktop, sorry, and press save. And there you have it. Your map is now set up and you are ready to draw.